Hello, my name is Lauren. Um, so a week ago, Tuesday, my sister was pulling into a parking structure at her work where she's been there for 30 years. It's an underground parking structure with security gates and the homeless keep getting in there and causing issues with the gates. So she pulled in there to park. And when she went to go back in her spot, she noticed somebody laying there. She called the police or she called up to the office and said, call the police. I think somebody might be dead here. Um, sometimes they do do drugs and different things around in that area. So she pulled forward into another spot and then she got out to look at the man and noticed another man was standing off to the side. So she kindly just said to him, hey, this is private property. I don't want you guys to get in trouble. You should leave. And at that moment, the man on the ground jumped up so fast and was on her, like right up in her face, inches from her face in a second. The other guy came up on her side. The guy was screaming in her face, uh, very obscenities, calling her many different names, saying he was going to hurt her. He was going to do this. Um, the, the one man backed up for a second, and that's when she bolted to the door where she has a key fob to get in. She went upstairs, very up the elevator, very shooken up, very emotional, uh, very scared. Called her husband. Um, he went and got her, brought her home. The next night, we're out at dinner, and the vortex deemed the door, red tagged it, said it was broken, unusable. So on the other end of the parking structure, north end, there's another roll-up door that goes out of the parking structure into a parking lot. Well, there's a big gate that's locked that brings you into the parking lot. So the head doctor, the owner of the building said, we need to open up that gate. We haven't opened that gate in like eight years. Nobody knows where the key is. So we need to cut that lock off. So my sister was like, oh my God, I got to go down there and cut that lock off. And I said, I'll go with you. And then my brother-in-law, he's pretty good sized Samoan fella. <laughs> and, uh, so if you have him with you in your back pocket, you really are not scared. And so me and him went, we all went down there and we were close to it. And then her phone went off and it was the alarm company. And they said that alarm just went off on the South gate. And she said, well, we're three, four minutes away. She said, I'll dispatch the police. We got there, um, pulled the, uh, pulled in the alley at the same time the police were pulling in the other side of the alley. And I put my hand out, friendly wave to them. I said, we're here to replace these gates. I jumped out with bolt cutters. I cut the lock, slid the gate open, started to walk over there. And the officers said, um, you got to stay back. We, um, we need to clear it. And they went in and looked around, checked everything, um, cleared it. it. took about seven, eight minutes, maybe. They cleared the whole place. They came out and said, nobody's there. Um, it's clear. So they got another call. They left. Now it's nighttime, of course. So I wanted to go in. We walked in and my sister got, started getting scared. My brother-in-law said, you're all right. She goes, I just, I don't like being here. I said, just go back to the car. I just want to get an inventory of what needs to be fixed. So she turned around. She went back about 50 feet to the car. And then he walked over there to console her. And I said, we're out here in a minute. So she started to get in the car. And I said to her, one question for you, <clears throat> where were these guys at? And she pointed and she goes right over there in that corner. Well, I looked to the side and there's a door and it's a steel door, um, like a fire door. And uh, I said, did the police clear that? Did you see them? And she says, no, they said uh, they didn't have a key and the key's upstairs. So I looked at it and you could see the, it's not a deadbolt, it's just a regular lock. You could see it gapped open. So, like I said, I'm a general contractor and build those things. So I took my knife out. I said, I'm going to check it. And I stuck my knife in there and I popped the lock. <clears throat> I opened the door. And when I opened the door, it was pitch black. There he was, um, 6'2", 285, um, high. And he came flying at me. So I instantly just threw my shoulder into the door and he tried to get out the door and his, I mean, I could literally, our faces almost touched hitting the door with him. So I took a couple cracks at him. He went backwards into the room. I got the door shut. I screamed James to my brother-in-law. So I hit the door. James came up. He hit the door. I'm two 205s. James is probably 300. We hit that door. 
all of a sudden this guy hit the door and he opened it up about four to six inches. And I went, Jesus, this guy's got some strength. He backed up, he hit the door again. Then he started screaming in the cussing match started between me and him. I said some things. He said some things. Um, I told him I was going to shoot him. He said he was going to kill me. The, then all of a sudden the fire extinguisher started shooting through the door. So in that moment, and I, I never had to burn out. I never had it. Uh, me and him, me and James could handle this guy. No problem. Well, we came to the realization we, we probably couldn't handle this guy. Our hands are going to be full. I pulled it out. Um, I am missing two fingers on this hand, on my left hand. So I was going to have to shoot him with my left. And he hit the door. And I said, if you hit this door again, I'm going to shoot you. Well, I put my foot down. I leaned back. And I knew he was as tall as me. And she said he was 6'2". So I knew he was as tall as me because when we were fighting at the door. And I put the thing right up next to the door. And I thought he was going to shoot me in the fire extinguisher. Put it right up next to the door. And he hit that door when that door opened up four inches I, bl I blasted him right in the face um it hit him in the right cheek and just peeled his cheek back he let out a scream oh god i can't believe you shot me I, you shot me i can't believe you shot me and i said just stay there the police are coming all this took place in about three minutes well it took 16 minutes for the police to get there the cops came um, i put james on the door i stepped back i was covered with powder <clears throat> i put both my hands up to the side i took the burner i set it on the ground the police were coming up there was a dozen of them i pointed at it i said i've got a burner hd uh, kinetic gun it shoots a solid round um, it's non-lethal and i shot him in the face and he looked at me and said cool where's he at <laughs> and i said right there uh they had james step back pull the door open um, guns drawn they brought him out cuffed him up um, called an ambulance for his face um, long story short um, wow I've been in a lot of fist fights in my life so is James and uh, I'm, I'm truly thankful that I had that burner um, and the police said that I'm sorry I'm emotional <laughs> the police said they're thankful he, that you had it they Thank God you had it. Um, if it, if you didn't have it, we might be having a different conversation. But when I just shot him that one time, with just with the kinetic round, the hard round, it stopped him. It stopped him dead. He didn't try to open that door. He didn't try to shoot me with that fire extinguisher anymore. He just sat there and tried to use his words to get out the best he could. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm truly thankful for it.